Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Indecisive. I'm your host, James Gamble. And just like before, previous episodes, when there's shit on my mind, I like to turn on the camera and just speak openly. And uh, what I want to talk about tonight is something that's been rolling around in my mind for the last uh, several weeks, really. It's mindset, habits, issues with love, trauma bonding, and all that. Uh, I have a friend of mine who's kind of recently going through a divorce, going through issues there. Similarities that him and I have had. Uh, if you listen to other one of my previous podcasts in the past, uh, you were well aware that I was in a relationship for five or six years. It did not end the greatest. Really a reason why I do this podcast, because it's cheaper than therapy. It gives me an opportunity to kind of work through my shit, as well as kind of give insights to hopefully somebody else who's kind of going through similar situations and just uh, so other people know that they're not alone and people go through similar shit over the last uh, even a couple of years, really. I, I think about mindset and I think about the state of your own mental health, just how you take people take care of yourself, like myself, really. And we'll kind of go into like, and I'll, I'll give it more picture of kind of what I'm what I mean you know when do we kind of go through certain mental health issues and we go through certain battles of depression uh certain areas of where we're down on ourselves we don't necessarily take care of ourselves all that well uh, there was a period of time from I say about 2019 to about 2021 where I gained quite a bit of weight maybe about uh 40 pounds or so uh throughout a span of two years I was in a state of mind where I wasn't taking care of myself, both physically and mentally. I didn't care enough about myself to really notice what was going on. I was very nonchalant about a lot of things. Didn't put any prioritization on making sure that I work out or making sure that I eat correctly uh, and not even paying attention to the physical change in my body and just the way it looked and how I felt because I was in a dark space and that depression was kind of roaming over me not making me notice what is happening around me and especially stuff that's happening to me and my person because at that point I thought very lowly of myself and I didn't love myself enough to really kind of say hey this is a problem that this is uh, an issue that I need to kind of address and take care of. And the mindset of a person, and this is kind of what I want to get into too, is that your, your mindset, you have to be willing to work through your shit. People go into certain situations, and I think kind of similarity of, of again, giving to my own experiences of where I was back in 2019 and through like 2021, is I had a lot of stuff that I was angry towards. Uh, the COVID in general, right? We were like locked down. We couldn't really go out. I couldn't really talk to really much of anybody about situ situations and issues that I felt. Because I, I kind of think of it from a different mindset. And you don't want that false sense, of false sense of security. Sometimes it's great with your friends. Either if it's like a relationship that's broke up, they're like, fuck that bitch. You know, you don't need her. You're a great man. You don't need her, blah, blah, blah. She did you wrong and all that. And then when in reality, there's like nothing truth to exactly what they're saying. If it was an admirable, like they both, like there could be in a relationship where both parties agree to just separate just because it's not working like adults. But you have your, you know, you who are friends and those are great people to have. I'm not saying anything against those, but they kind of get that false sense of security of like, yeah, you're right. Fuck her. Like, I don't need her and all that. And you're just distracting yourself from the real issues that you are feeling depressed the real reasons that you're feeling sad and if you're not in that mindset to really try to understand that and try to work through that and heal that part of that wound that you have from that traumatic event situation whatever it is relationships breakups uh, lost a job grief of a family member and uh, that's really what it is. A lot of it is grief. If you don't work with that grief, that's just going to sit there. That's going to sit within you. It's going to stay. You may distract yourself long enough to maybe forget about it for a couple of years, but there's going to be a point in your life of some 
some time of an event where you're going to have a trigger response. And the trigger response is going to make you either remember or think about or bring up all those wounds that you haven't worked through. And you're going to have a very emotional response to it. Rather, if it's in a new relationship to where maybe the previous relationship, there was some type of emotional abuse or trust issues of uh, somebody losing their trust in another betrayal of some sort. And then any sign of that in a new relationship is going to trigger that response to the point where you're, you know, your reaction, natural reaction is to protect yourself and to get yourself out of that situation because you don't want to go through that again. Instead of actually kind of working through your shit and knowing that, okay, hey, this is not a repeat of what's happened in the past. You know, this is kind of a new relationship and this is not the same person that did that traumatic, exp- uh, that traumatic experience to me back in the day. And uh, <laughs> it, it, it's interesting of, of some sorts. Of my, in my example, I had a friend who I haven't seen in a while. He lives out uh, about four hours. Well, not that far, but I think about two or three hours away from me. And uh, very rarely where we kind of get a chance to see each other. We talk all the time. You know, we have a group chat that we all uh, talk in uh, regularly, but it's very, you know, we don't see each other all that often. And I remember, I think the last time that I saw him in person was probably, well, this was kind of COVID. So kind of 2019 happened and COVID and everything happened throughout that. And then about, you know, after everything kind of lightened up a little bit, I think it was about 2021, maybe a little bit before that. Remember he came down and I remember exactly you know, we hanging out for a little bit, talking, to, uh, uh, hanging out at the pool. And I remember I was getting in the pool. I remember I took my shirt off and I was chatting a little bit. And I remember the thing that he, he said, he's like, oh, so you gained some weight, huh? And it kind of dumbfounded me. I'm all like, well, I, without thinking anything of it, I'm all like, well, I, mean, I guess a little bit. Yeah. Cause I wasn't in that mindset of, you know, looking at myself and actually admitting that, there's some type of negative thing that I've done that I let myself go, that I allowed myself to, to gain weight. To get more context behind it, I've always been a very, like one of the most active people of my little friend group that I have. You know, I play football on the weekends. I was a, you know, collegiate runner, uh, semi-professional runner as well. A lot of marathons in the past, a lot of, you know, half marathons, 5Ks, 10Ks, you name it. You know, I, I run like the wind, right? So, them seeing me all of a sudden like 40 pounds heavier and I couldn't run probably a mile at that point to save my life is it's surprising to them. They're like, you know, kind of like what what the fuck happened? And I remember he left that day and uh, inside my apartment, this was the first time in two and a half years that I had that hard look at myself. And this is the mindset you got to be in. So the mindset, you have to be able to take the criticism to heart and use it to better yourself and not be defensive. And, you know, there's two ways you can go about it. You can go with the defensive route of saying there's nothing wrong with what I currently am. And in reality, there was was not. I mean, it was unhealthy for me to gain weight. But, you know, not hurting myself, just myself. But um, you can be in denial that you're not doing anything bad uh, to yourself, that you're perfectly fine, right? And it's easy to be in denial with yourself. That's the the default thing that we fall back to is that, oh, I'm perfectly fine. Like, motherfucker, you told me I gained weight. He doesn't know shit. He gained 20 pounds himself. And, you know, he, you know, how dare he say me that I gained whatever this and that. There's that aspect. There's the other aspect of it where you know where that person is coming from. He's not saying it from any type of hate or any type of bullying or making fun of. He's a friend. He sees something different. That's not a normal trait of the individual of who I am. And he says something about it. And it's not, and it's those type of situations where you really have an out of body of experience where you take yourself and you truly have an outside experience looking at yourself And when you realize that you haven't done that in years, 
Sometimes people haven't done it at all, period. Maybe the first time doing it. And then you look at you and where you're at. Some, some maybe say it's perfectly fine, but you, you give it that prioritization, you give it that importance. And I did that. And I saw myself. And I went, whoa. I did gain a lot of weight. Like, when did I look like this? Like, when, when did this happen? Like, who the fuck? Nobody told me. Like, why, why did I, I, I look like shit? I feel like shit. And then now it was all of a sudden the pieces started uh, falling into play and started making sense. And then so what that was, too, the distractions all of a sudden snapped me up like that. All of a sudden, all the distractions that I was currently doing to, you know, not, uh, notice my weight gain and not notice uh, the unhealthy eating that I'm doing. Uh, all the sodas I was drinking a day, you know, four or five Dr. Peppers, give or take, uh, candy, sugar, in and out, fast food, you name it, that all that I was doing. And then, you know, once he told me that and that made myself have that out, uh, out of body experience and looking into everything that was going on in my life, it's like, like, dude, who the, who the fuck? Like, wh- who am I? Like, what is this? And it's at that point where, like, again, it snapped me out of the state of mind that I was in and slowly started saying, okay, hey, we need to make some changes. This is not, uh, this course of action that I'm doing is, is toxic. It's not healthy. I'm going down a path <laughs> that will eventually lead to worse things if I keep on the same trend that I'm currently doing. And I started working out again. And it's hard to start all over again, but you know, I'm happy to say today, uh, 30 pounds lighter <laughs> than what I was at that point in my life. Um, yeah, but I, I took that criticism and I'm like, you know what? He is right. I have gained a lot of weight. Um, it's not healthy currently what I'm doing. And I should do something about it. But you have to be in that right mindset in order to do that. i give you uh, another example. And this is where we're kind of talking about trauma bonding and stuff like that. How this can kind of be close to similarity of trauma bonding, especially in a relationship and a relationship kind of breaks up. Is that I, I feel... And this is something true that I feel, and I've only really kind of dug into this in the last maybe couple of years about love and true love. Is that I feel true love shows most during trauma. Let that sink in a little bit. Give you a little bit of time to think about that, especially about what I mean by that. And then some of you, through the exact mindset that I explained before, are either thinking two things. One, that makes a lot of sense. Or the other, the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Oftentimes they're not, you know, relationships. And sometimes with people that are kind of working through their stuff, uh, take for me, for example, that uh, just uh, getting out of a relationship for uh, whatever the five-year relationship that I was in previously to my uh, last uh, stint one. You know, I was single for about two and a half, three years. Um, went into a relationship not realizing a lot of stuff that I still had uh, that I have not worked through. And not letting kind of like the relationship organically happen. And uh, realizing certain issues that I've had that I still need to work on. As, as an example. So with that, you know, and and inside relationships, and and I've seen this examples through um, other relationships that I've seen with friends and even family, right? Where maybe there is an issue that they need to address, either the man or woman. And their partner expresses the situation of uh, another person needed to work on something, rather, no matter what it is, maybe it's communication. We'll say that's probably the easiest one, right? Communication, uh, being communicative. And, um, or maybe acts of service, some sort, right? Uh, being vulnerable. I would probably say that's maybe that that's a really good one to go off of. Uh, maybe a person's not being vulnerable enough. Commitment could be another, another thing too. Maybe commitment issues. Um, no matter, uh, it could be rather small or big as far as you know, moving in together or making a commitment of um, having joint bank accounts or um, 
whatever marriage is the ultimate commitment but uh, as far as that and i'll give you the male perspective of it because I, I only really often see this because I, myself as a male <laughs> it's the only way i can give my point of view across and it's like i know with guys and i've done this i'm guilty of this in the past too is we will only do whatever our partner is recommending for them only right keep the relationship alive like well she wants me to do this so i'm gonna do this for her which is not the right way of honoring that agreement and that commitment in that matter because what's going to happen is you know the the situation is going to be um i am gonna show commitment of some sort right uh, yeah, open up a bank account in, in her and I's name. Um, sure, that's easy. I just want to let her know that you know we're 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 good. Um, making a place for her, uh, maybe clearing out a drawer for her to put her clothes if uh, you know you have a relationship and she spends the night every now and then or something like that. Kind of showing commitment, right? Making a key to your place. All those. Uh, so we're we're, th- we're doing that in order to make her happy. And that's the only reason we're doing it. We're not taking the approach of that criticism that we are getting that because we're not doing whatever it is the our partner wants us to do. Is that we, we don't look at it in ourselves that like, oh yeah, that's an issue that I need to work on and I need to be better at. That saying that exactly, that I need to be better, not... I need to do this for her. Sure, motivation can be that. We can be motivated by your partner and thinking that, you know, yeah, she's right and I need to do this and I want to do this in order to, you know, be with her, keep with her. Motivation, you can, that, that, that's okay. But the only reason to do that is just to, if the, if the sole reason you're only doing it is for her and not to, you know, just to kind of appease her and just kind of get it out the way, not the right way of doing it. And I've seen, so those situations that pop up there later on down in life, you know, the situation will kind of pop up again, I'm sure. Whether it's a commitment type of thing, a repeat, maybe stop being, you know, as communicative, um, not, ta- not taking that extra step to kind of making sure that uh, you're always showing, you know, your commitment and dedication to the relationship, whatever it is, right? down the line it will show itself again and that's when you know those issues start to come up again and then ultimately separate and break up and all that right so those are kind of one type of scenarios of that and there's the other type of scenario where and and i think honestly this truly is a beautiful thing if this does happen i don't necessarily see it happen very often because once the relationship is over You know, that's pretty much, um, it's already at the point of no return, especially in today's age. You know, um, I am lucky, I would say, that I was blessed with my previous girlfriend that I've had in the way that it ended. Because there was no drama. There was no fighting, pointing the blame. There was a lot of taking accountability, which uh, it's completely rare. I'd never had that experience before with a separation. <laughs> um, so I'm blessed. Uh, so I, I, there is, I, I guess, proof that there are adults out there and people that truly, truly have that unconditional love and show towards one another. So in this scenario where I feel like kind of like true love builds over trauma is same situation that I kind of mentioned, but say the relationship ended because of X, Y, and Z. Because either a person didn't do this, he wasn't committed, he wasn't, or didn't know how to be communicative and stuff like that. So they separate, right? But maybe they, they're still somewhat of a kind of keep in touch or whatever. And now me being separated from the relationship, I have no skin in the game. There's no reason for me to do these things for her because i have no benefit in the matter so you you take out that aspect altogether. 
a person that still continues to work on themselves after the relationship is over truly shows that mindset of them wanting to better themselves. And from a, a partner perspective, I don't think there's anything else that honors that kind of commitment and that kind of agreement that you both entered into. And from the other person perspective, it's kind of an awe really, because they see that what you are showing them is that you are constantly working on yourself to better yourself. That you love yourself. And that's an attractive thing to show that you love yourself. So where the asterisk comes into this is that there's a very fine line between trauma bonding and actual unconditional and true love. Because it's the other situation where, again, as a guy's perspective, is that I'm going to do everything that I possibly can to get her back. I'm going to do everything that I feel that she wants me to do in order to show her how much I love her. And so they're motivated by the fear of being alone, that this is the only love that I'm ever going to feel, that fear of being lonely. I think that this is the worst possible thing that could happen to me, that I'm going to sacrifice my own values, my respect, my self-worth into holding it on to something that is not healthy, that is toxic. And that's trauma bonding. Because you're not doing it for yourself. You're doing it out of an emotional response of fear of like, this is the best that I'm ever going to get. And so I need to do everything that I possibly can to hold on to this. And it, it's funny, I was listening to other podcasts and other things as well as where there's, you know, sit, uh, situations where they kind of uh, try to explain trauma bonding. And the, the best way that I've heard about it is, you know, and they, they said an animal that does physical harm to themselves to reach certain things. Um, they had like a dog and uh, there was food inside another side of a gate. Right. And the dog wanted the food and he did whatever he could, uh, even physical harm to himself to kind of reach through a gate and to get the food and get what, what he tried to want. Ended up, you know, hurting himself, uh, cutting himself in the metal and stuff like that and uh, causing physical harm through that. So if you think of it the same way, if you're doing whatever you can in order to try to get something that is... I'm not going to say not not worth getting, but the things that you have to do in order to get it or the things you really do in order to get it as far as like hurting yourself and putting yourself in harm's way, physical health, mental health, whatever it may be. Um, It's not healthy. (laughs) But yet if you go through that situation of where you truly take that outside look at yourself, And this is, again, putting yourself outside of your body, that outer body experience. And kind of try to look at yourself in the way that another person is portraying that constructive criticism and not the negative criticism. And truly taking a look at that and like understanding or at least trying to understand what they're where they are coming from. And make the conscious decision to yourself that, yeah, I I, I do see that. And I need to work on that. And yeah, this is something that I want to be better at. You're doing that for you now. That's healthy. And you can't make the conscious decision of saying like, well, I don't really think that's the way it is. And I, I don't feel I, I am that. So you, you have to be, you're, you're in the driver's seat. You're in control too. So you have to be careful of not being manipulated. That's one thing. But you have to. Yeah, and this is the, the constant battle of always being on your toes and stuff, right? Because there's you, you just have to truly understand oneself and understand yourself and really um, set those boundaries and kind of understand who you are. Insecurities, pros and cons, whatever. You just you have to really understand who you are. And to truly give yourself at a person, to give yourself at some, to someone else, to a job, to a relationship, as a friend, uh, father, brother, son, what have you. You have to understand you and how you work. You have to love yourself. And don't let anybody take you down to a level that you shouldn't be at either. And vice versa, you shouldn't do that to the other person 
you got to look out for your own well-being. And a constant battle, the constant battle of maintaining that mindset. You know, it's easier said than done. You know, we can fall into complacency very easily. I do it all the time. I, you know, I always kind of constantly want to better myself as an individual. Uh, always learning a new skill. Um, try to, you know, be active and do things that I know that adds value to my self-worth. And, you know, a lot of times, often, I'm a couch potato, watch TV, and that's okay. Maybe, you know, I'm supposed to work out and run. Maybe I skipped a day because I just didn't feel like it, and that's okay too. But not falling into that trap of complacency where it becomes a problem. So, yeah, again, you always have to have that kind of like outside perspective of looking in and realizing everything that's happening. Like, oh, whew, I haven't worked out in a few days. I'm not feeling as well. Like, outside looking in, like, ah, oh, dude, yeah, you haven't. You should probably just, you know, be active again. And notice, you've been watching a lot of TV lately. And you have that conversation with yourself. I think you should probably read a book. And I hate reading, but you should probably read a book. You should probably try to do something, you know. Be, be uh, creative today. Record a podcast. Hey, mission accomplished. You know, create a video. Do something that gives you worth. Not just sit in front of a TV. You know, try to find your reasoning of what makes you happy. And do that. This is just one man's opinion. Again, I, I speak freely of topics that are on my mind. I am no way saying that anything that I've said is factual. This is just my own personal experiences and things that I contemplate in my mind. Again, I'd love to have a conversation with somebody else. If um, anybody out there is listening, um, rather just to kind of not combat, but just have a discussion about anything that I just recently brought up t tonight. Love to hear your perspective on it. I love having deep conversations and having another person come with a different side of thinking that I might not maybe be thinking about because in everything that I talked about, again, is personal experience. I'm, I try to think from the outside looking in and I try to put myself in the other person's shoes, but it's very hard to think what other person thinking that I haven't experienced myself and we only know what we know. Um, so again, not, not trying to offend anybody or anything that I've said. Um, I just um, speak in my mind openly and freely. Again, I appreciate anybody who's listening to this and to let you know, hopefully, if this helps out, that you're not alone. All right. Till next time, guys. Take care.